welcome back to the narration of those 18 days where we are discussing life lessons from the 18 day kurukshetra war today we are discussing about the 8th day this was a day in which one of the lesser known sons of arjuna iravan had his day both a day of glorious heroism and of tragic sacrifice iravan or aravan as he was known was arjuna's son through ulupi now ulupi was a naga princess whom arjuna had met during the one year exile that he had gone to after he had accidentally come in the same chamber in which uh, yudhishthir was with draupadi the pandavas had a agreement that each of them would have quality time with draupadi and draupadi could also have quality time with each of them without having to worry about her other husbands at that time so the rule was if any of them violated that time which they would have with draupadi then there would be severe consequences of that so while arjuna was in exile the way it worked out was that he also gained many powers and formed many alliances so that was the time when he married subhadra and that and that's how the yadu and the kuru dynasty especially the pandava side got allied with that powerful yadava kingdom another alliance that he formed was with the naga prince Na, naga kingdom is through the princess ulupi now they had a son irav iravan and now iravan uh, he was extremely powerful warrior his name literally means wan is a possessor like we have bhagwan one who possesses opulences so or we have dhanwan one who possesses wealth so iravan now ira is cognate with ida now ida refers to food or it can refer to possessions so the word iravan has two distinct meanings one is that he has extraordinary possessions he was he was wealthy he had lots of resources both in terms of power and in terms of uh, wealth the naga kingdom was quite opulent and he was himself very poor or powerful so but ida as it means food now food is one of the things that are sacrifice is offered in sacrifice whenever the fire sacrifices are performed so iravan also refers to one whose opulence was that he became like the sacrificial food in the kaur in the mahabharat war the pandavas did not and none of the pandavas were killed but they did suffer severe casualties almost their entire next generation was wiped out so we do know about the death of abhimanyu which happened due to a tragic happenstance combined with the vijayadrath's opportunism on the 13th day we will discuss that on the 13th day we also know about ghatotkach sacrifice on the 14th night ghatotkach was the son of bhima and then we also know the brutal slaughter at night by ashwatthama when all the pandavas the sons of the pandu pandavas through draupadi were killed so war did uh, have a heavy toll and one of the warriors who was sacrificed or rather who sacrificed himself for this glorious cause was iravan now iravan burst forth on the war scene on the 8th day on this day he fought with such stupendous heroism that duryodhan and his army was alarmed so we know that there are there are different divisions in an army and each division engages with some other division 
and it may not be the same on every day. On the eighth day, Iravan faced against the Gandharas. Now the Gandharas uh, are the are the associate with Shakuni. Shakuni and Shakuni was the brother of <coughs> Dhritarashtra's wife, Gandhari, as she was known, and she was the primary. She was the primary reason why Shakuni uh, had some grudges against the Kauravas. He felt that she had been wronged when she had been married to a blind prince, blind prince who later became the king circumstantially, the Trashtra. So he wanted that if my sister can't become the queen, then at least let her sons become the kings. And that's why he conspired time and again uh, to have the Ryodhana enthroned as the king, or at least to get for him to get power. So Shakuni was accompanied by several of his brothers, and they were also good warriors. So the Gandharas, and they all, and they had a huge number of forces, and they were primarily a cavalry unit. In the Kurukshetra War, there were primarily three forms of warriors. There were those who were fighting on foot. There were those who were fighting on horses, and there were those who were fighting on chariots. And of course, there were a few elephant warriors. And although many of the warriors had capacities like mystic powers by which they could even fly through the air, not a large number, but some of them did have those, but still they all had their uh, modes, standard modes of transportation. So Iravan was also a horse warrior, so was a part of the cavalry. And these Naga warriors were all of them a huge army and they were extremely powerful in their own right. And they were led by their commander and their head that was Iravan. So he had long limbs, long hand, long legs and he was dressed in a iron mail which made him extremely difficult to defeat or even wound. And he also was caparisoned with gold. And similarly, to a smaller degree, were all his assistant warriors. And as they all fought, on this particular day, it was their day of heroism. They broke upon the Gandhara forces. And one by one by one, every one of them was just destroyed by the Naga warriors led by Iravan. Shakuni's sons, uh, Shakuni's brothers, they fought determinedly, but they were just no match to the sheer speed, skill, and strength of the Naga warriors, especially of Iravan. And while they were fighting just right in front of their eyes, they saw their armies being slaughtered. For a Kshatriya hero, few things are as mortifying as seeing one's subordinates or one's assistants being destroyed and not being able to do anything. So Shakuni's brothers fought fur furiously, but they were just no match. And as the armies were being destroyed, finally, Iravan turned toward the warriors who were on Shak who, the Shakuni's brothers and then he fell upon them. They shot arrows. They all shot arrows fiercely at him and his limbs were pierced and blood started flowing from his body and Iravan got enraged. They broke his bow but he just picked up a sword and jumped off his chariot and charged toward the towards the siblings of Shakuni. In alarm and in horror, they had thought that when he, he would be wounded, he will fall. But instead of falling, he had he is charged. So surprise is often a very powerful element in any confrontation. To the extent an enemy is predictable, 
to that extent they can be fought with as per a plan but to the extent the enemy acts unpredictably then that catches their opponents off guard so bima also often used the strategy when he would be attacked when he would be wounded when his weapons would be broken far from stepping back he would jump forth and that would just stun paralyze the opponents so this is what happened to iravan and he just charged towards the brothers of shakuni and they kept shooting arrows at him but whirling his sword he just knocked off all the arrows and raced towards shakuni's brothers they fell on them using his sword he lopped off their limbs and then after that one as they tried to fight desperately for their life he used the same sword unmindful of the arrows that were piercing his body he swung that sword furiously forcefully unstoppably and lopped off the heads of shakuni's brothers one by one by one the few survivors from shakuni's army uh, among shakuni's brothers they just raced toward duryodhana crying out in for in pain and pain and horror and they informed him about the slaughter that their army had been subjected to the havoc and the destruction that iravan had caused duryodhana grieved and raged after a few moments thought he turned toward one of the rakshasa warriors who was there on his side his name was alambush alambush was the brother of baka who had been killed by bhima and he said just look at how iravan is destroying our forces oh alambush you are a warrior who is unmatched in your prowess go and put an end to iravan and save our army today Um, Alambush was delighted at this opportunity, licking his lips in anticipation of the war. He charged toward Iravan. As he went in that direction and roared out a challenge, Iravan looked around out, and he had already decimated the forces facing him, and he was delighted to face this new challenge. As both of them fought fiercely. the war seemed to be like the like the celeste legendary wars fought between greatly powerful beings in the past it seemed like a war between indra and rutra and in that war both of them had initially come with their forces and similarly here the naga prince had his forces and the rakshasa had his forces and those forces fell on each other and they started fighting fiercely and it was a it was a tough evenly matched fight alambush and iravan also exchange weapons fire for fire and they countered each other they wounded each other but nobody seemed to get an upper hand over a period of time that warriors their soldiers fought and destroyed each other and in that area of the war field just these two formidable warriors stood facing each other and fighting it was a fight that was so spectacular that even the celestials were beholding it as alam alambush kept attacking iravan in different ways iravan kept parrying the attacks and counter attacking receiving an opportunity alam iravan charged toward alambush he realized that from a distant fight he didn't have much of a chance iravan was also very good at fighting with swords so he used his sword and swooped down upon alambush and lopped off his limbs and the attack was so swift and so severe that alambush just couldn't do anything and though his limbs were severed and it seemed that he would die and iravan and the forces other pandava forces seeing that they cried out in celebration and victory but somehow alambush survived 
and just like Ravan had the power to regenerate his limbs if they were cut off and that is how he thwarted Garuda, so thwarted Jatayu. Jatayu had fought fiercely against Ravan and he managed to rip off some of his arms also. But when the arms regrew, then Jatayu was, uh, was stymied, he was flummoxed and he was also exhausted by the fight. But something similar happened here for Iravan. He fought heroically. He had already fought with the several great battles on that day and he had achieved substantial victories. And now he was tiring. He had the Kshatri, the, the Kshatriya spirit of fighting was strong within him and he didn't flinch or turn from the fight. He again attacked Alambosh and again lopped off his limbs and again those limbs appeared. Undaunted, Iravan kept his attack and Alambosh found himself defenselessly being attacked and mutilated but still he survived and regenerated his limbs. Realizing that he couldn't win against Iravan by uh, normal fighting, he decided to use the devious means. He started using his Chatriya, his Rakshasa powers to create illusions. He started creating various illusions, changing his form, appearing in various, in the forms of scary animals, monsters, and tried to threaten Iravan, try to intimidate him, try to paralyze him, and thereby try to gain the upper hand in that battle. But Iravan countered his illusions, and Iravan used his own mystic powers to create other illusions. Now he was a Naga warrior, so he took on the form of a snake and he charged upon Alambush. The charge was so, so strong, so scary that Alambush was taken aback for a moment. But then he thought and he took on the form of Garuda. Now Garuda is a natural enemy of snakes and as Garuda started swooping down on the snakes, Alambush, Alambush's attack became suddenly so, so strong that Iravan had to give up his form of a snake and as he was thinking what to do, how to counter, he was caught unprepared for a moment. He was already exhausted, his reflexes had become a little weak and moreover he had at this particular point been out, outwitted as he was pondering about his next strategy Alambush swooped down upon him and lopped off his head Iravan tried to counter but <clears throat> Alambush was too fast and too sneaky for him as Alambush fell, as Alambush knocked out and killed Iravan, Alambush and his followers, the Kaurava warriors, gave out a roars of victory. Whereas the Kapandava warriors and soldiers lamented the death of, Alam, of Iravan. <clears throat> Meanwhile, Arjuna was fighting on another side of the war. He had been challenged by um, the Trigartas headed by Susharma and he was busy fighting with them and because this was such a tragic event a messenger was sent to him to inform and as Arjuna heard about the news he was struck with severe pain and he considered how Duryodhana's greed and enviousness had taken one more heavy toll. The Pandavas themselves had suffered and that was bad enough but to have their loved ones, their children being killed was especially painful. And yet Arjuna didn't have too much time as a luxury. The Trigartas were still attacking. Arjuna resumed his fight 
with determination endeavoring to finish this war and end the scourge that Duryodhana had caused because of his arrogance and obstinance. The Pandavas were virtuous. They were fighting for a cause that was glorious. They were not fighting simply to gain the property that they had lost. They were fighting to establish Dharma in the kingdom that was their, their dynasty's responsibility. Duryodhana was a vicious person and it was the responsibility of the Pandavas to ensure that they had the law of dharma or the law of virtue in their kingdom. The cause was just, the cause was worthy and yet the cost of war was, was heavy. War, sometimes it's romanticized in, um, in certain literature but war is brutal. And death, especially of loved ones, is painful. And it is the testimony to the, to the sacrificing spirit of the Pandavas, to their service attitude, to their strict adherence to the principles of Dharma, that they were ready to sacrifice whatever was required to assist Krishna in his mission for establishing Dharma. The deliberations that they had gone through, the many peaceful resolutions that they had offered Krishna's his personal proposal to offer peace on the most accommodating terms. All that had been done to try to avoid all such casualties in war. And yet, although the costs of war were heavy, Arjuna knew in his heart that the cost of not fighting a war would in the long run have been heavier still. Thinking thus, he girded himself for the fight, determined to put an end to this war by exerting himself to his fullest. So the lesson here for us is that when we dedicate ourselves to some worthwhile cause, some glorious cause, it will cost us. We may have to, we will have to sacrifice. A specific extent of the sacrifice may vary from person to person, but sacrifice is what proves our devotion, our dedication and sacrifice is what is required to get things done in this world, especially to have virtuous things done in an age where wise rules. That is the sacrifice. We may not have to sacrifice our loved ones, but by the Pandavas example, in their sacrificing of Iravan and Iravan's heroism, in fighting on tirelessly, we all can gain inspiration to, to do the small sacrifices that we may have to do for sticking to dharma and devotion during the course of our life. Thank you. Hare Krishna.